Hello again and welcome to this video. Uh, this video will be on installing free radios on the Santox um, distro or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So I am on the documentation for on the documentation page for installing free radios, but you know a couple of things needs to change, right? Because this is on Ubuntu and we need to make sure this runs on CentOS system. So um, you can see that you have an option to basically install, you know, uh, kind of compile free radios from scratch. And uh, the reason why I need to compile that is, you know, there is a small, you know, um, patch that Doug Vanderwald created to kind of enable the RLM raw patch uh, raw support. And if you're wondering what this does, uh, basically you can see here that apart from it being recommended, uh, the raw support kind of helps you in, you know, it's dealing with dynamic clients. So dynamic clients would be, you know, typically people that come, you know, behind a DSL connection that uses DHCP. So uh, this would be, you know, you have an ISP who gives you a dynamic IP address every time. So uh, of course, nobody knows exactly, you know, the kind of IP address you're going to have. So but imagine, you know, you're going to connect your radio's desk system to a system that connects your ISP via, you know, DHCP uh, as your one connection. And then of course, you know, you need to now use that IP address, you know, to always, you know, kind of, um, link up clients or something like that. So um, this is recommended way. I would recommend you throw that in. Of course, this would be for future use if you need that in your environment. Or you can decide to actually just compile, you know, um, free radios the normal way, right? So of course, um, this would mean just you compiling directly without a patch. So um, of course, I, I actually went ahead and, you know, kind of uh, built an RPM. Uh, of course, this will be available on the link that you can download for some of the files I, prov uh, I provide. And I went ahead and kind of compiled free radios to with the RLM um, patch. So a couple of things needs to change anyway. But if you're wondering how to do that, let me see. Uh, there will be you know an option for you to do that as well. But let me just quickly you know give you a heads up, right? So you need to make sure that you have the development tools and the development libraries enabled. So but in CentOS six. Uh, point X. I think the development libraries doesn't exist anymore, but you have development tools and of course you need to also make sure that you have most of the development packages for, you know, LibPel and the LibSSL. Uh, of course, you need that the development um, environment for MySQL. So you need the MySQL develop package, you need the Pel develop and of course the um, SSL develop package. Uh, and of course the RPM build, you need the RPM build directory and once you do that, of course, uh, you should be able to have the RPM build command, which you can use to build the patch. But before you build the patch, you will need to actually patch, you know, the source of the free radius. So you can see using the patch minus uh, P1 or dash P1 option. Um, so hopefully this, you know, kind of gives you an option. And of course, you see when you do that, you get a failing um, kind of trunk, which you can manually go ahead and do that to enable the RLM support. But just to save us some time and save you also some time, um, uh, I've done gone ahead and actually made some RPMs that will work with that. So make sure you install the RPM that I provide um, for free radios. That's if you need the raw um, RLM raw support. Otherwise, you can just download or install the default free radios that comes with um, CentOS. So, but like I said, um, I'm just going to install you know free radios and you know using the source I provide. So. Um, that's available in the free radios directory. You can see here, I, after compiling, I have a, you know, a lot of, um, that's a lot of RPMs. So of course, I'm just going to go ahead and use the RPM command, uh, dash V to install, you know, kind of all the RPM files. So this is not really necessary to install all, but you know, you can just go ahead and throw that in. So here I have the, um, <laughs> any the Unix ODBC driver. So of course, I uh, can go ahead and install that using the, you know, my local copy that should be available. Of course, you just go make sure you do a yum install of the Unix ODBC uh, devel package. So you can see uh, that we need that, of course. Uh, of course, you don't need the devel though. You just need the Unix ODBC driver. So uh, once that's done, uh, we can go ahead and try to install the RPMs and hopefully this should suffice. So if you don't have some dependencies, of course, it's going to go ahead and spit it out and tell you that you need to install those dependencies as well, you know, but uh, for me, I have some packages pre-installed, so it shouldn't be a problem. So while that's installing, um, of course, like I said, this comes with this support, so we can pretty much skip everything up to the point where it says, you know, setting up free radius, right? So of course, we're just going to go ahead and check this to be sure that what I have is actually, you know, having the um, 
RLM support. So you can do an, you know, you can do an LS on the USR um, as being, you know, share free radius. So if I got it right. So let me get the path again um, on the USR lib free radius. Um, of course, if you do this, uh, you can see you have so much files. But what I'm looking for in this case is the RLM raw um, support. So let me just make this easier for you guys to see. So I'll grab you know raw, and you can see I have the you know RLM raw 2.20 SO and RLM raw SO. So I pretty much our free radius install comes with that enabled. So uh, so of course we just jump right into this part of the you know. The documentation so for us uh, we're using Apache so we just need to ensure we're doing most of this um, by default if you install free radios of course it will create the rad DB you know directory for you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that and kind of um, create a directory for that um, the reason why I'm doing this is because you know uh, the vendor wall kind of packaged um, a tweaked version of the rad DB uh, with some files so we need to use that uh, version instead so um, this should be in the RD cake setup directory in you know, you know that's in radius so we need to go into this directory and extract the rad DB um, directory and move the rad DB to the etc directory so um, one of the things we need to also ensure we do is to make the directory writable by the radius D radius D user. So this is a default user that um, kind of comes with free radios in CentOS. Um, yep. So once we do that, uh, we should be able to kind of go into etc rad db. And one of the first things I like to change because um, there's some path differences from Ubuntu and CentOS is to actually kind of you know copy. Um, some files from the rad db, you know, the original rad db radios.com file. Uh, this is necessary anytime you're doing most of this port. I need to copy the exact, you know, this whole directory here, and I need to update the radios.com file here. And uh, before I delete that, I'm just going to leave that so that you see some of the um, discrepancies here you can see the prefix is USR share this is the you know the one we have for CentOS but Ubuntu is the USR local of course so because you compiled um, you know Ubuntu so it's in the local directory and pretty much everything you know, depends on the prefix you can see most of them have the prefix so if it's wrong then of course you know it to be wrong for your install so I'm just going to go ahead and remove all this and you know kind of go ahead and follow the necessary um, tweaks so uh, we need to make sure that the dictionary file has a permission of 644 uh, so we need to make sure that's that so 644 and the dictionary file of course uh, we need to also ensure that the dictionary file the path is correct so before we change well um, I had to start changing the path uh, of course we need to make sure that um, you know we make some symbolic links so Let's go ahead and do that, right? So we make sure we go into the sites enabled directory. So if you notice, we have the sites enabled directory here. So we're going to go into the sites enabled directory. So based on um, the documentation here, you can see that here we create a symbolic link uh, from the sites available uh, for dynamic clients. So of course we can just you know just copy this and we can just make this happen course so now we should have you know a symbolic link to you know dynamic clients right so of course you can see that um, we have dynamic clients we have you know inner tunnel and all that so but you know this is normally this is good this is required uh, so let me just all right so let me just do this again just to make sure we have the correct user handling the directory uh, so once we create this for dynamic clients we need to edit the dynamic clients and replace the content with what you know we have here of course this is you know like a sample but we need to make sure that that's done so um, manual um, dynamic clients and of course um, the best way to change or 
kind of empty directory is to echo nothing into the dynamic clients file. So now we should have dynamic clients. Uh, it's empty and we should go ahead and copy the content. Make sure you include the last parenthesis just to avoid any errors with radius desk. So uh, once we do that, of course, we can go ahead and paste and hopefully there's no difference between this and you know the the Ubuntu install because there's nothing to you know specific to centers or Red Hat. All right, so of course one of the things we need to also ensure we do is to create a raw module, um, of course. So in order to do that, um, we need to go into the modules modules directory here, and um, what we need to do here is to create a raw module, uh, modules raw, and ensure that we have a raw definition like this. So just an empty raw definition. Um, so, of course, raw, uh, since we have raw, then we can go ahead and paste this. Uh, this is basically just it, what we need. And of course, we can go ahead and make sure that we instantiate the raw module in the, you know, radios.com file. So, okay, so where we have instantiate, so course we can get to the last core and add the raw directive there. Uh, so basically that's that. So once we do that of course we can test if we just desk will start with an error. So but before we do that um, a couple of things I need to change as well. So the dictionary file needs to change. Uh, you can see here it's including the USR local share directory and this is for CentOS it's just the USR shared free radius directory. And of course, you know, at the end, we need to ensure that this part uh, points to the current dictionary overrides file. So this needs to be correct as well. So ensure you do this before you continue, otherwise you get an error. Right, so once that's done, let's go ahead and give radios a kick uh, radios the uh, free radios a kickstart. So I'm just going to include multiple S's here. And the reason why I'm doing that, of course, is to be sure that, you know, I have this covered. And one of the things you need to check here before instantiating the SQL module is that we already have a definition of, you know, client uh, 12700 localhost. And, of course, it's suggesting that there might be a duplicate. So, of course, um, you know, by default, there will be a user there. So, we need to go to this file here and ensure we comment out. You can see we have already have a client here. So uh, basically what I'm just going to do is to comment out the definition for, you know, the local host user. Uh, so just to comment out, you know, the default user that was created here. All right, so hopefully make sure we don't omit the last one. Uh, let's try the radius desk again and Hopefully this has fixed the problem, and of course you can see that, you know, it's saying ready to process requests. So that means we can safely start free radios and it will accept requests. So I'm going to kind of cancel out of this by pressing Control C and making sure that we add radios desk to our start. All right, so hopefully this has been an exciting journey, uh, right? So of course uh, one of the things we need to also ensure because we're going to, you know, kind of allow Apache to write and control radius desk in the front end we need to make sure that we you know kind of add you know um, the Apache user to um, the sudo as file right so of course you can use the sudo as command to add that uh, but what um, what's interesting here of course is for me is you know you can just copy this line or kind of make a copy of this we're going to tweak this or uh, let's copy this one instead this is Apache specific. Alright, so we need to add this to the sudo as file. So of course you can go ahead and use the vsudo. Uh, that is if you are already, you know, kind of uh, used to using the vi command line or since we're using nano we can kind of edit the file directory directly. So um, of course we can take this to um, of course we can just add it here since we're adding um, this to be specific. So one of the things we need to do here is to ensure that you know we have a group called admin, and admin has you know kind of can run 
uh, all commands everywhere. So, but for me, I already have um, kind of a definition here for admin that runs most of the commands with no password. Uh, of course, we don't want it to be asking us for password at the time. So, um, okay, so what I instead want to do is to make sure that the Apache user uh, for us, the Apache user is called, you know, user uh, Apache. So we can go ahead and add Apache here. So what we're trying to see now is, you know, for all users, right, uh, want to give them a semi-privileged account, right? So all the commands, of course, no password. Um, but in this case, we want the Apache user to run all. So if that's the case, I want it to run all. Then, of course, we want it to, you know, kind of continue without asking for password. All right, so we need to make sure that this this directory is also, you know, kind of accessible by, uh, you know, is correct, right? The path is correct. And we need to make sure that the admin wrap uh, wrap is writable or reachable by Apache. So, but you know, hopefully this, you know, will give us, you know, a better, um, right? So let's do it this instead. I uh, also want for all commands that there should be password or let's just okay so let's just allow the no password command to run for uh, this command. So anytime it runs this command there shouldn't be any password of course so um, once we have that set up we need to make sure we go into the var www.html uh, kick2 directory and in the kick2 directory we need to go into alright so alright we need to go into rd cake I'm um, sorry for that and once we get into rd cake into the setup directory in scripts we need to make sure that these two files are executable so of course we need to make sure that you know change the permissions for all the PL files and we need to also make sure that the radmin um, file um, conforms to our system so you can see that we have the Etsy radius D start okay and so everything here should be fine um, okay so the rat scenario uh, we need to also ensure that this points to you know the correct rat client path so usr being rat client okay so having done that we can go ahead and start radios there so service radios the uh, start okay so make sure it's actually running by doing a net start on ntlup and we grab radius so we can see that we have radius just running in the default ports which is okay and um, hopefully um, we should be able to you know kind of <coughs> allow your root user to test right uh, later on in the upcoming screencast so of course go ahead and test our radius desk and ensure we can still log in right great and one thing I need to point out before I end the video is um while, while we're at the um, sudo was file um, there were a couple of things I did before you know you know the video so but I just want to point it out that you do um, make sure you comment out the default uh, required TTY and the visible password option um, the reason is because you know um, the Apache user is going to be making some non TTY type calls uh, that means there's no terminal for it to already test so hopefully this um, of course has been kind of useful um, so um, let's go ahead and stop the video and we we'll continue the next lesson so have a nice day